Hello, welcome to Terrorism Tuesday. My name is Casey, and I'll be your host. So every Tuesday, I will go over a foreign terrorist organization that's recognized by the Department of State or United Nations. It won't be in any order, so let's let's begin. So this this week's is going to be about Jama Islamiyah, which in English means Islamic Congregation. So I'm going to use the acronym that they go by as JI throughout this. So let's start with their flag. Looking at the flag, you can see the collar green, and collar green just represents Islam. The book on top of the flag is the Quran, their holy book. The two shemitars represent that they would use violence to push uh, Sharia law. The crescent moon is just another symbol of Islam. You see a lot of Middle Eastern countries uh, adopting the crescent moon. So now let's talk about Jama Islamiya. J.I. is a Sunni Islamic group. It was created in Indonesia in the year 1993. The founding fathers is Abu Bakar Basha and Abdullah Sanka. It's estimated that their size is about 5,000. So this is Indonesia. They operate in Indonesia, the Philippines, Thailand, Cambodia, Vietnam, and even in Australia itself. Since we know their location, let's talk about their goals. J.I.'s first goal is to establish their caliphate, like we saw in Syria with ISIS trying to establish theirs. So the first phase of doing this is taking over the Indonesian government. The second stage is taking over the regional governments of Singapore and the Philippines. And the lastly is the global jihad, which they will integrate with Al-Qaeda. Since we know their goals, let's talk about their leaders. You can see that many of the notorious leaders are dead or in prison. It is one reason why they aren't as effective as they were in the early 21st century. So we're only going to talk about one that's alive and one that's dead. Abu Bakabasha is currently in prison, but may be released. He's very famous within Indonesia, not seen a threat to Indonesia. When Indonesia declared independence from the Netherlands, Bashar founded J.I. to overthrow the secular Indonesian state through political disruption and violence. Norden Top was a famous recruiter and responsible for several terrorist attacks such as the Australian Embassy in Jakarta and the Marriott bombing. Here's a video of him making threats. His job also was to recruit suicide bombers. Since we know their leaders, so let's talk about their hierarchy. Amir is also known as the commander. He's the leader. He appoints and presides over the council, such as the governors of Fatwa. After Amir, it is divided up into four branches, similar to our, our branches of government, the executive, the judicial, and legislative. But this is divided up into four branches. So the Mantiki one is located in Singapore and Malaysia. In this branch, they raise funding for operations such as terrorist attacks and training. Mantiki 2 is located in Indonesia. And it's responsible for actually carrying attacks within Indonesia, such as bombings, kidnappings, and just targeting law enforcement. The Mantiki 3 is located in the Philippines and Malaysia. They are responsible to train new recruits. And then lastly, Mantiki number 4 is located in Australia and Indonesia. And it's responsible for So finance. now let's talk about how they're being financed. First, J.I. gets money through membership fees and donations. Like any FTO, they also engage in criminal and business activities. They also receive funding from Al-Qaeda's court. They have several charities in Asia and Oceania, and they are known for weapons smuggling, kidnapping, and extortion. Reports say they're currently suffering from the lack of money at this time, but I believe if Bashar is free, they will bring a lot more money. They also make money by sending their fighters to help other terrorist organizations, such as the conflict in Syria. Since we know how they make money now, let's talk about how they recruit. One way they recruit is through social media, and that's where they get the majority of the recruits, but they also get the recruits from well-educated families that go to Islamic schools. They target these schools so they can replenish the group's ranks. Lastly, I want to talk about their friends and enemies. 
One of their closest allies is Abu Sayyaf, which is an extremist Islamic insurgent group in the Philippines that has provided special training camps for J.I. militants. In return, J.I. members provide training such as bomb making and weapons handling. J.I. also serves a direct connection between ASG and Al-Qaeda core. J.I.'s best friend would be Al-Qaeda. And the reason is because they were really close with Al-Qaeda jihadists in Afghanistan and it influenced their doctrine in many ways. Al-Qaeda core had initially provided a bulk of the revenue also. Though J.I. members are able to raise their own money, some analysts believe that the group is still financially connected. I wonder some members of J.I. associate with Al-Qaeda's formal affiliate in Syria, the Nusra Front, and have joined the group there too. So now, let's talk about the good guys. J.I.'s enemies would be the United Nations, the United States, United Kingdom, and based on J.I.'s history, the country that would want to see their defeat is Australia. In conclusion, J.I.'s history has been a very violent one. They conducted many kidnappings, vehicle-borne, improvised explosive devices, suicide bombings. The thing that's holding them back right now is the lack of funding and the leadership. If Abu Bakr Bashir gets out of prison, it could lead to a second wave of J.I. Stay tuned for next time. Boko Haram is next.